You want to make your living as a freelance artist, but you're not exactly sure how to do it. If you're a filmmaker, I can give you a little bit of advice because I've been working as a freelancer on and off for the last 20 years. Freelance life is not easy. First thing you have to do is scramble. You have to find clients. You have to make sure that you spread yourself far and wide so that you have enough clients that can give you enough work to keep you fed. So the first thing you need to do besides honing your skills and make sure that you actually can do the work really, really well, either as a filmmaker, a cameraman, an editor, producer, writer, director, whatever it is, you've got to have enough people spread out over enough companies that can keep you employed more or less full time if that's your goal. Now, the nice thing about being a freelancer is that you can choose whether or not to take work up to a point. Because if you turn down work from a particular client more than a few times, they're probably not going to call you again. So you got to make sure that you're choosing wisely. Sometimes you got to do work that you don't want to do in order to keep the client relationship going. I found that in my career, most times, at least now, because I've been working for a long time and I've developed really good relationships with people, that I can kind of be choosy about the kinds of stuff I've worked, I've worked on and I want to work on. I like working on stuff that's uplifting, that's family friendly, that uh, is inspirational, things like that. And I'll do the occasional project that maybe is a little less than, but I draw the line at certain things. Like I've been offered a lot of serial killer stuff, a lot of true crime stuff, and I tend to stay away from that. Some true crime is okay, depending on what it is, but the really dark serial killer stuff, I've started staying away from that stuff because it just seeps into my soul in a way that I don't want. Like I can't sleep at night. I get all these dreams and I, because I, I live with the work in my head, what I'm working on and, and I put a lot of myself into it. And so when something's super dark, uh, like I got offered Haunted on Netflix uh, to edit that show and I took a look at it and I just, I, I said, yeah, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And it's not that I can't do it. It's that I don't want to do it because I don't want to live in that dark place and, and essentially promoting that kind of material out into the world. I choose not to do that. So for you, it may be different. You may be okay doing that. You may be not okay doing something else, whatever your, your point of view and your worldview is. But the point is you've got to be picky. You've got to be choosy about what you work on. And you want to start building relationships with the clients that can give you more of the work that you want to work with. I know that for myself, I've said no to a couple of things and, and those people just don't call me anymore because that's the kind of material they work on. And I've, I've had to be okay with that. You have to be okay with letting some of that stuff go because that opens up space now for you to be able to work on other things that do feed your soul, that you can put yourself into. And generally, you're going to do better work when you do that. Uh, but in the beginning, I mean, especially if you're just starting out, it's hard to be choosy like that. You kind of got to do everything. Uh, you just say yes to everything that comes your way within certain parameters, right? Something comes along that you're like, absolutely not. I can't work on that. Don't be afraid to say no to that. Uh, I am someone who firmly believes that something better will come along. And so, but, but you've got to be really, really aggressive in reaching out to people and developing your network, especially when you're first starting out. You know, you got to do stuff for people for free just to see, you know, to have them see what you can do. Uh, you got to make sure that you start up that website or get that reel out there and, and hit up all the, the, the websites looking for jobs, mandy.com. And, and there's a bunch of different ones. Staff me up. Make sure you get on that if you're in the, the entertainment world. And then talk to your friends, help them out on projects, help them get their careers going because they'll turn right around and, and help you out. Or even better, they'll take you with them. Right? Because I've helped friends that, that get jobs based on the things that I've helped them with and their hard work. And then they remember that I did that for them and they bring me along and it's really cool. And I've done the same thing where people help me out and I get bigger jobs and I try to bring them along in those jobs. And so you can kind of rise together in the ranks. And so the, the ebb and flow of the freelance world can be kind of hard on your mindset. And you have to develop a mindset that's long term because if you're all about stability, if you're all about making sure you get that paycheck, if you don't, if you aren't very good with money and you just need to automate things, you might want to consider a full time job going to work for somewhere, someone, maybe your rates are going to be a little less, but you get more work, steady work, maybe benefits. But if you're the kind of person 
that can manage themselves well, manage their time, be a self-starter, manage money. That's really important because the freelance life is ebb and flow. It's feast and famine. And if you're just out spending all the money when you get it, when those famine time comes, you're going to be really, really uh, hard up because you're not going to, you're not going to have anything. And so you really have to get good at managing money in order to live this freelance lifestyle. The other thing is, are you good at reaching out to people? Are you good at having this, uh, this initiative where you can market yourself? And in, whether it's in the down times or good times, you've already, uh, you've, you've always got to be working on that next client. You got to be working constantly to keep yourself in, in front of all these people that can hire you. So you got to make sure you're good at that. And then lastly, are you a self-starter? Because the freelance world, nobody's going to reach out to you and say, here's the stuff. You got to go get it. Even when you've been in the business a long time, because there's always somebody chomping at your heels. There's already, there's always somebody else who's after your job. So you got to be a really, really good self-starter and keep going, getting your reel out there and making calls and following up. And you got to do the business of it. I know a lot of freelance artists who just want to do the art, but they don't want to do the business. And the business is at least half of the job. You've got to be out there writing letters to people, inquiries. Hey, you know, can I get in with your job, with your company? You got to be sharing your reel. You got to be making sure you get to know people, go to lunch, go to coffee, making sure those relationships are kept up. That's really the business of Hollywood. And unless you're working full time for a company or one of the big studios, if you're freelance, which a lot of people are, that's at least half the job. So you got to be really good at what you do, but then you also got to be really good at meeting people and getting yourself out there to be in front of the people that can hire you. So those are the things I would suggest that you really sit down and write down on paper, okay, what's my skill set? How am I with money? How am I with self-starting? How am I with following up in the business side of things? I've had very loyal relationships over the time where I do a good job for a company and then they keep hiring me. And hopefully if you get three or four clients like that, you can actually make a living. Now, some of my clients have gone out of business. COVID put out the marketing department for Universal in, in Hollywood, they got laid off, like the entire department got laid off with the exception of maybe one or two people. And so people that I've had relationships with for 30 years had to all go find different jobs and they've consolidated all that work to Florida. Well, I don't have the connections in Florida. Those people are completely separate. And so I would have to start all over again and probably move to Florida to build that relationship up again. So every now and again, something like that does happen Back to the idea of putting yourself out there. I've had to go back out and start meeting people that I've never met before. But the nice thing about it is that through friends, through other networks, you do start getting more and more referrals. I started working for a new agency right now out of Nashville, and we're doing a lot of really good work together. And I really like these people. So hopefully that develops into a longer term relationship. But I just encourage you now as you're going into it, as you're thinking about, is this the life I want? To sit down and really evaluate yourself. And then if all of those things, you can check the boxes and say, yes, 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 yes. Then welcome to the freelance lifestyle. I wish you the best of luck. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're into and what you do. And maybe I can help you out. It's a referral game. I'm hoping to build a community here where I can help you guys. You guys can help each other. And maybe we can all stay working in this crazy business we call entertainment. So that's it for today. I'll talk to you next time.